Hello and welcome to the episode 312 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. A day in Belfast, a Christmas record, and John Lennon getting a divorce are some of the main stories of the day. On the 8th of November 1960, the Beatles, still a quintet with Pete Best on drums and Stu Sutcliffe on bass, performed at the Kaiser Keller in Hamburg, West Germany, for the continuation of their residency. One year later, in 1961, the Beatles were back in Liverpool where they performed at a Cavern Club with the Remo 4 and Ian and the Zodiacs. By this time, they had become a quartet, with Paul McCartney taking the place of Stu Sutcliffe. In 1962, we get another Hamburg residency, the second in the year for the Beatles. The band, now featuring Ringo Starr on drums, was on the stage of the Star Club, performing their own set and backing the main star, Little Richard. On the 8th of November 1963, the Beatles arrived in Belfast for their autumn tour. Once crossing the Irish border, they were interviewed by Ulster television reporter Jimmy Robinson. The interview was broadcast that evening, between 6.25 and 6.35 pm, for Ulster News. But more interviewing was looming. At 2 pm, the Fabs entered the Studio 8 in the Broadcasting House, in Belfast, to record an interview with Sally Ogle for 6.10, the BBC's rival to ITV's Ulster News. Again, the interview was aired later in the evening, between 6.10 and 6.31 pm. Still later in the evening, the Beatles played the Ritz Cinema in town. One year later, in 1964, the four were again engaged in a tour, but this date was a special one. Their British tour stopped in Liverpool, offering the Beatles the chance to perform in their hometown for the first time since the 22nd of December 1963, playing two shows at the Empire Theatre. 1965 the Beatles were at the Abbey Road EMI Studios to record Think For Yourself, the second Harrison composition to be included in their next album, Rubber Soul. Between 9 pm and 3 am, producer George Martin taped the initial part of the session, during which the band merely rehearsed the song, in the hope that some of the comments or exchanges between them could have been good enough to be included in the Beatles' annual Christmas disc. Think For Yourself, still known with its working title, Won't Be There With You, was completed before the end of the day, with a rhythm track taped in a single take, featuring John Lennon on organ. As customary, the song was further enriched with overdubs, including three-part vocal harmonies, tambourine, maracas, and a second bass part, run through a fuzz box to achieve extreme distortion. The session was wrapped up with the Beatles recording their Christmas message, with three takes of ad-lib chit-chat and jokes. One year later, in 1966, engineer Jeff Emerick worked between 4 and 5.30 pm at the EMI Studios to complete a mock stereo mix of She Loves You. It was impossible to produce a true stereo version, since the original two-track tapes of the sessions had been destroyed, as customary at the time. The mock stereo version was produced by having two mono tracks. On the right channel, Emmerich removed the low frequencies. On the left one, he removed the treble. But allow me to remove the treble of finding out what you could do to help out with the production of this and other music-related content, stating the obvious. Visit www.simonmas.com support at the end of the episode and show me how fab you are. Thank you! 1967. Norman's Film Productions. Another fun day for the editing of the Magical Mystery Tour film, a task that was seemingly never-ending. On the 8th of November 1968, John Lennon got a divorce. 
or rather, his former wife Cynthia did, from the London Divorce Court for John's adultery with Yoko Ono. Cynthia was also given custody of the couple's son, Julian. Having established by the fact John Lennon's net worth at £750,000, about £11 million in 2020 money, the court accepted that John had offered £100,000 to Cynthia, about £1,500,000, a quarter of which was to go towards the acquisition of a house for Cynthia and Julian, and the rest to support them until Julian had reached 21 years of age. The court established that another £100,000 was to be put in a trust fund in Julian's name, from which Cynthia could withdraw money, on John's approval, to pay any school fee for the child. Remarkably, the court ruled that should John have had more children, the fund was to be shared equally among them. I haven't done it much lately, but I have included a video for you to watch in the episode description. It's a 1984 interview that Cynthia gave to Granada TV, where she talks about her Beatles years, her relationship with John, and their divorce. True to the spirit of this podcast, I think it's best if you hear herself commenting on the whole situation, rather than having me talking, so that you can make your own mind up. And with this, it's time to close the episode. Tomorrow, Brian Epstein will meet the Beatles for the first time. Surely you don't want to miss that. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.